Hey everybody, it's Bumps of the Night. Uh, it's been about like, what, half a month since I dropped a video? I probably look like shit. Uh, I just got finished driving a 13-hour trek back home to my, uh, my lovely apartment that I'm getting ready to move. As you can see, I've got this unwanted move happening. Yes, I want to leave the state I'm in, but no, not at this moment. And definitely don't feel like packing up just to go to another apartment to sit here for another year. So, yeah, that's been kind of weighing heavy on the mind. Anyway... <clears throat> I know I finally, like, got past my little bump of depression and I decided to, like, just get everything off my phone in October, and that's why you got, like, constant uploads, and then I just, whew, gone again. I just got back from a very long trip. We drove all the way up to Tennessee from Florida. It was almost a 13-hour drive for a on-site wedding for a ex-coworker who was a really good friend of ours, and, um, you know, they're, like, family practically, so they invited us, and we're like, shit, we gotta go. But if we're going to go all the way up there, why don't we make a vacation out of it? So we ended up taking a week and we went up to there. And I'll throw some clips here and there, uh, just kind of like a very short taste of what it was. I don't put too much. Bitch, I ain't never been to... This isn't the first time I've gone to Tennessee, and one of the perks of going to Tennessee is I get to stop at bookstores along the way. So that is why I'm primarily making this video, and my shit's all kind of out of the place, but hold on real quick. I don't want to do... Okay, I know I want to do this. I know I want to do. Alright, so... I stopped at this very small bookstore. I can't even remember the name of it. I want to say it was like... Yeah, so we stopped at this really, really niche bookstore. It was really interesting. I saw it on Google and I was like, we're going. Everyone got to kind of pick something to do that day and my choice was the bookstore. So we went to the bookstore and I was on the prowl. It's a used bookstore, so you know there was going to be something good there. And as I'm hunting through it, I've gone through almost every single section. I go to the back where I found out they had a kids and teens section. While I was there, I stumbled across some Fear Street books. So I've got here, The Last Scream. I've got the dare, and I like this, that the dare has got like that holographic uh, printing. I don't know if that means it's like a first print. I'm not too sure, but that caught my eye, actually. That's what caught my eye was the shine. Uh, they have the Catalina Chronicles, the Evil Moon. I'm not sure if I have this one, but for as cheap as it was, it was like three bucks. I figured I'd pick it up. Worst case scenario, it's trade bait and or eBay profits. And then last but not least, uh, Truth or Dare, and it's another one of those like shiny... Uh, prints on the R.L. Stein and Fear Street. So I picked those up. Those was about three bucks a pop. So I was like, wow, that's pretty awesome. Not only in this really awesome bookstore, I actually found Fear Street, which I usually don't find Fear Street. Nine times out of ten, I'm finding goosebumps on this channel. But uh, the wife likes Fear Street. I like Fear Street. So I was like, hell yeah. Uh, and then moving on, there is this other place. And actually, there's another video on my channel probably from like a year and a half ago. I went last time. It's this place called McKay's Used Bookstore. And they sell everything dvds video games blu-rays movies books like you name it it's just like it's like this pop culture swap and shop central it's awesome
course, you know, I had to hit it, and I actually went twice because there was some stuff I was eyeballing and I wasn't too sure about, and I was like, no, we're gonna, we're gonna go. So, off the bat, I also picked up while I was there a copy of this is Goodnight Kiss. It's the collection of one and two. It's a collector's edition. I thought that was cool. I think this sells for about like eight bucks on thrift books. I got it for four, so can't be mad about that. Uh, two books for the price of one. Woo, spooky. Then I got a copy of The Runaway, which is an amazing condition. Like, this is probably the best condition book I found here. I think it's been read maybe once. And then I also picked this up while I was there. They had an entire manga section. I actually don't know if I got it on film or not. I was too busy, like, kind of scoffing at the prices because some of the prices for the manga is ridiculous. Like, a lot of these manga who have been read and used and are beat up, they were charging 12 bucks for it. I was like, dude, they're not even that new. But this one was only six bucks. So I was like, yes. And then last but not least, I hit the movie and the video game section, which I also did last time. So let's start with the movies, and then we'll work our way to the video games. So a few of these were in the bargain bin, which, you know, I'm not mad about. Because, again, some of these I hadn't even seen yet. So I have not seen the remake of Poltergeist, and I got that for three bucks. And I was like, hell yeah. I have not seen A Quiet Place. Go ahead and judge me. Yes, I know. And this one was originally eight bucks, but it was marked down to three. So I was like, yes, we're going to get that. Plus, it's got the slip cover, which can't be mad about that. And so the last pickup I had on the Blu-ray side of things is I picked up one of my favorite films. We reviewed it on the Horror Burrito. It is uh, Return of the Living Dead. So this one was classic. This is like that Walmart special edition, and it's actually still new and sealed. But uh, this is that classic 80s film where we had such amazing zombie effects and stuff. If you haven't seen Return of the Living Dead, I highly recommend you go watch it. I can't wait to show my little brother this because he's getting into like manga and horror and stuff. And this is just, it's going to be awesome. Moving on to the last section, the video game section. So I'm always picking up video games for the collection. I've got the Xbox One, which plays Xbox 360 games. I've got the PS3, PS4, PS5, and the Nintendo Switch. I got a Wii, but I don't actually use it. It's just for aesthetic, I guess, at this point. Point of the matter is, I have a large video game collection you actually don't see here, because the movies are here, books for, like, young adult horror, manga, and then right here, you can't see, is, like, my video game shelf. So... Always on the hunt for a good deal in video games. So here we are. I picked up a copy of Sh uh, Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor. Um, this is one I've been meaning to pick up. It's pretty cheap. I got it for four bucks. Uh, the reason I grabbed this copy specifically is because it's got like the embossed shiny lettering, which I mean, it tells me it's an earlier print. It's one of the games I've been planning to pick up for a while, and honestly, I'm not mad about the price. I mean, I'm pretty happy with the find. So eventually I will play it. It'll probably sit on my shelf for another two years, but I will get around to it. You guys would be shocked if I told you I'm just now playing Fallout 4, and that's been out for like five years, and I'm a huge Fallout fan, so. All right, next, I picked up a copy of Gravity Rush 2. So I'm a huge fan of this series. I played the original one on the PS Vita, and I kind of slept on the fact they made a second one. I think I missed out because it was a short print, so I finally started looking around to pick it up, and it was like 50 bucks, and I was like, no. Uh, and they actually remastered the first Gravity Rush for the PS4 as well, and that shit's like 100 bucks, so it's just like, no. <laughs> I want to play it, but not that bad. Anyway, I picked this one up for 25 bucks. It's a little more steeper than the stuff I usually buy, but if you go on eBay right now, they're 50 bucks a pop. So I could play this and then flip it for double. I probably won't because, I, like I said, I enjoyed the series, but, you know, it was a good deal. And then last but not least, I picked up Returnal for the PS5. This was $9.99, which is crazy because anytime this game goes on sale when it's new, it goes down to, like, maybe $29.99 cheapest. I've never seen it cheaper than that. It's one of those games that came out first when, like, the PS5 dropped, and it is rated T for teen, so it's not going to be that scary, but it looks like it's some kind of psychological horror game. It's one of my list of things to pick up if I could get a good deal on it, which I did. So, yeah. Here was, uh, here was my haul in total. I'm going to see if I can put everything together here. Alright, so here's the awesome entire stack of my haul. I've spent about 90 bucks all together here. I had quite a few awesome items for the prices I paid, personally. Do you guys think I did a good job? Let me know in the comments section down below. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, maybe consider doing so, because I got that spark. I can't explain it. Like, I feel uh, reinvigorated. I'm ready to just hit it. I've got seven, seven new prompts of scary stories I typed up when I wasn't driving. So I'm very excited to start actually releasing content on this channel again. I really needed some kind of kick in the ass to get me back into things, and I've decided. I'm going to continue showing off my sweet finds on this channel, but this needs to be a horror narration channel. So... I've got a few scary stories like off in the wings here that I plan to actually release. I know I said I was going to release them. I actually ended up just giving them to Zach. So uh, they ended up on Campfire Tales. And a couple of them did good. A couple of them did eh. But I want to narrate them the way I wrote them. So please stay tuned because I have quite a few projects coming. Uh, once I get this stupid moved in, 
I've got a collab coming out with somebody where I'm working on the third episode of the Goosebumps Goes Through Reviews. I'm also actually writing the next script for the fourth episode of Goosebumps Goes Through Reviews. A while ago I did that Goosebumps Beyond thing. I have the second uh, story in Goosebumps Beyond about halfway done, so I really have it right in a way. I promise you, uh, 2023, it's going to be bumps in the night's year. I'm telling you, you guys are really going to appreciate it. And then I'm going to move, and I'm going to leave Florida for Tennessee. So, yeehaw, everybody. <laughs> Remember, dear viewer, you never know what goes bump in the night. <laughs> Die, fly.